Hello and welcome back Sci-Tie Tech. In this video I'm going to show you how to make a DIY photo scanner box with using a digital camera. This device has special features such as a pull-out tray that allows you to change your photographs, some LEDs, and an on-off switch. Let's get started. <laughs> And these are the items you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need. Some LED strands. A slide switch. Neode mini magnets. Two metal plates. A 12 volt power supply. A piece of cardboard. And a large cardboard box. Now let's go and assemble this project and let's get started. First, I'm going to go and spray paint the inside of the box white. And there, it should look just like this. And as you can see, the paint is dry, which means I'm ready for the next step. Next, what I'm going to do is find the center of the top part of the box. Make a line going to corner to corner to make a big X. And there, X marks a spot which means right there is the center. Next, I'm going to measure the diameter of the camera lens. And as you can see, it measures over eight centimeters or 80 millimeters. Sure, I can go off from 72 millimeters like what the camera says, and that's for the inside portion of the camera lens. The outside portion is much bigger. Next, take a compass and measure a radius that is over four centimeters. And make a circle, which will then create a diameter of over 8 centimeters. Next, take a Zacto knife and cut out the circle. And there, my circle is now cut out. Take the camera lens, and as you can see, it fits. Now, not all cameras are the same, which means I'm going to need to put something here to balance the camera, so that way it stays more even. Next, find the center of this photo sliding cardboard. And now find the center of this box. Align the two. And then make a mark on both edges, so that way I have an idea how big of a hole I need to cut. And there we go, take a Zacto knife and cut out the hole. And there, the hole is now cut out. And as you can see, the photo slider fits perfectly. And whoops, I accidentally made a mistake. I wasn't paying attention, so I accidentally made a hole on the side. What I need to do is make a hole on the bottom. So repeat the same process, and it should look just like this. There, perfect fit. A closer look, and as you can see, it's perfectly centered. As you can see, this part here was correct, and this part here was the mistake, so I take some electrical tape and cover it up. Next, I'm going to take some LEDs and place some LEDs inside. And what I'm going to do is recycle these LEDs, which came from a previous project that broke. It's always very good to recycle your projects. And put the LEDs in place. Add some super glue to stick them in place. And there, should look just like this when complete. Next, I'm going to take these wires and link the two LED strands together. Connect the negative to negative. And the positive to positive. Next, I'm going to take these alligator clips that came from my lab bench power supply that is set at 12 volts. Touch the connections. And there, as you can see, the LEDs light up. Next, remove the DC power jack that came from the power supply. I just need the wires that connect directly to the LEDs. And if you are wondering which wire is positive and which wire is negative, there are two ways to tell. One, you can take a multimeter and just simply attach it to a multimeter. Or a second, you can just simply look at the wires. As you can see, there's a white line. The white line always represents positive, and the black wire 
with nothing on it is always negative. Next, I'm going to take the slide switch and solder it to this wire. Next, take a Zapto knife and cut out a hole that's on the side of the box so that way I can be able to place the switch in place and to put the wires inside to connect to the LEDs. Next, solder the positive wire from the power supply to the slide switch. This wire is negative, and this wire is positive, and I want to connect these two to the LEDs. And then connect the switch inside of the hole. First, take the two wires and put them through the hole. And now take the side switch and put it in place. And there, it stays in place. Next, take the two input wires and solder it into the input of the LEDs. And there, she'll look just like this. And now it's time to test it out. Plug it in, and there, as you can see, it works. And now test the switch. And there, as you can see, it turns on and off. Next, take some hot glue and glue down the switch and glue down all of the wires. Next, I'm going to take the photo slider and I'm going to take these metal plates and put them on the slider. Next, take a photograph to get the right measurements for the metal plates and this photograph came from a Roman Colosseum from Provence, France from a school field trip that I was on when I was 12 years old. Okay, so now what I need to do is move the plates so that way they're the right size of the photo. I need them to be just underneath the photo. And there we go, it's a perfect size. Make some minor adjustments. And there, it's the right size. Next, I'm gonna take the Neo Mini magnets and place them onto the photo to hold the photograph down. And there, the photograph is now put into place. Next, make a test and take the photo slider and slide it through the hole. There we go, and now take the digital camera, place it inside the hole. And now make some adjustments. And there, perfect, it is now aligned. Unfortunately, there's a small glare on the photo. I need to fix that later. Before I do that, I'm going to take a marker and mark down where the plates are positioned. Next, I'm going to take some hot glue and glue down these flaps. As you can see, the position of these flaps is exactly what I need because this gives me the right amount of support to support the weight of the camera and allows me to be able to reach inside the box if necessary. Put glue on both sides, top and bottom. And there, nice and strong. And now back to the photo. Simply remove the photograph. And these metal plates need to be glued into place. Take some hot glue and place it where the plates are. And I'll take the metal plates and put them directly onto the hot glue and put them in the position where the lines are. And there, the metal plates are now glued into place. Now, take the photograph, reposition it, take the new the mini magnets, and place it onto the photograph. And as you can see, the photograph stays in place. Perfect. Flatten it out. Next, I'm gonna go work on the LEDs because these LEDs are a little bit too bright and too harsh. I'm gonna take these pieces of paper and cover it, and as you can see, the LED light disperses more evenly, which makes it less harsh on the photograph. Take the edges of these pieces of paper, fold them over,
And when I position it like this, it creates a little arch, which will then cover the LEDs and disperse the light more evenly. Next, take some hot glue and glue it onto these little flaps. And there should look just like this. And there, the project is now complete. Let's go ahead and test it out. Take the photograph and put it onto the photo slider. Hold it down with the Neo Domini magnets. This photo slider is a very useful feature. Place the photo inside, adjust it correctly. And when you photograph the photo, you can slide it back out. Remove the Neo Domini magnets and replace it with another photograph, and then slide it back in and photograph a second photo. And now it's time to take the digital camera and put it into place. Make some adjustments. The video from the digital camera looks like this. The on off switch is a good feature. You can turn it on and off. And this is what the photograph looks like. Yes, my fault, I needed to adjust the focus on the camera. However, it works. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own photo scanner box with using a digital camera. A very useful device to be able to photograph old photographs without using a scanner and just simply photograph it with a camera. Thank you for watching Sci Tai Tech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And of course, click on the bell icon to be notified for future Sci Tai Tech videos. To the next tech, goodbye.